Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. Thanks for coming back. If this is your first time, welcome. This is a podcast where we take a big topic and we try and break it up into five different episodes. It's easier for everybody. We've got notes here with me. It's a video podcast style show, so feel free to put your headphones in, listen in the background. This week we're talking about space travel. So how do we get to space? How astronaut training works? The dangers of space shuttles? Potential problems? And of course, where are we going? What's the future of space travel? So first, how did we get to space in the first place? If you think about the technology of like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, they were launching things into space and they didn't even have computers as powerful as what you have in your pocket right now, even if you just have a phone from 2001. It doesn't matter. It's more powerful than what they were going to space with. And that's insane, right? The the first rockets were actually 700 years ago in China and the Middle East with the invention of gunpowder. They didn't necessarily have to use them as weapons. Some of them were used for fireworks and entertainment and other purposes, but these were the very first rockets or missiles, things that were self-propelled projectiles. In the 30s and 40s, the Nazis in Germany started to create long-distance rockets. They were trying to hit their enemies in Europe, and the most successful that they were able to invent was the V-2 rocket. They moved away from solid gunpowder and they invented cool new rocket engines and nozzles and things that would make the propellant just flow better, become more efficient. And one of those was getting away from that gunpowder and going to liquid fuel. It was an alcohol and liquid oxygen mix. And they would spray it and then ignite it. And that little spray would burn with such incredible efficiency that they could launch rockets and unfortunately hit places like Britain. It was bad. However, it really pushed rocketry forward. World War II saw a lot of advances in rocketry, and the key really was efficiency. A lot of it was, you know, making sure that the engineering was sound so that things didn't explode, but ideally, efficiency could answer some of those problems. You wanted to make sure that the rocket engine, which is essentially a nozzle that focuses all of this energy out of the bottom of the rocket, was as efficient as possible because that would propel the rocket. So funnily enough, a publication, Astronautics, issue 38, October 1937, had a pretty funny quote that I found. A good rule for rocket experimenters to follow is this. Always assume that it will explode. That was pretty good, 1937. Missiles and weapons uh, were, were bad, obviously. No one is saying otherwise. But they pushed rocketry forward as they were trying to hit targets further and further and further away. But it wasn't the only reason. And by the end of the war, the Soviet Union and the United States had both started their own rocketry programs. Of course, many of the rocket engineers were kind of pilfered from other parts of the world. There were some homegrown engineers. But there was a lot of Germans as well because they were the ones that had been the most successful thus far. Rockets were going to the edge of space as early as 1942, when the first successful A-4 rocket hit the edge of space. And Dr. Walter Robert Dornberger turned to Werner von Braun, one of the fathers of modern rocketry, and he said, do you realize what we accomplished today? Today, the spaceship was born. That's a pretty huge deal. From something so negative as weapons and war. It's kind of incredible that something so inspiring like space travel came out of it, right? Without these rockets, we never would have gotten so high up off of the Earth. And in fact, that happened for the first time in October 4th of 1957, Sputnik 1 was launched, and it purposefully got so high that it left Earth and orbited. It was the first artificial satellite. You could tune in on your radio and hear it go beep, beep, beep. It was really neat. Uh, but also terrifying. And in the United States went into this whole kind of space fever where they didn't know what was going to happen. And it was this new uncharted territory. Imagine discovering that you could put a ship in the ocean for the first time and the people that you had, you know, that you were fighting or Cold War fighting, I guess, were the first ones to do it. You'd freak out. So this is kind of the same. November 3rd, 1957, Laika, who is a dog, was launched into space with Sputnik 2. And then on April 12th, 1961, Vostok 1 was launched, when Russian Lieutenant Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth. It was a 108-minute flight. He went 202 miles. It was crazy. April 12th, 1961 is still known as Yuri's Night today, and people all over the world celebrate it. Though at the time, again, Really freaky because the United States didn't really have their space act together quite. 
Then in July of 1958, we founded the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. It had a budget of $89 million, which in today's money would be about $736 million. And Alan Shepard was launched into space a few years later, in 1961. He was the first American in space. And in the same year, May of 1961, JFK said to a joint session of Congress, I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And to try not to slip into a JFK accent that would have been really bad, because it's tough. But in 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the earth. Of course, Russians had already done that, so we had to top him somehow, so we started heading to the moon. Um, eventually, July 20th of 1969, we achieved our goal. Neil Armstrong took uh, it piloted Apollo 11 all the way to the moon. Of course, we went around the moon. We had to go step by step, but this is a brief history. Most of this stuff, I assume, a lot of you know. The Apollo program at that point was spending about $5.9 billion uh, a year. NASA, in general, spending $5.9 billion a year. That was its peak budget. That would be $41 billion today. Um, and he got there, and he stepped out onto the moon's surface, and he said, one small step for a man... One giant leap for mankind. The radio cut out the A, but it was there. Eventually, we got really good at going to space. We could get to space pretty easily, or so it seemed. We got so good at going to space that when the Challenger disaster happened in January of 1986, we were surprised. People were surprised. Not necessarily NASA. They were always worried. But the public was shocked because we got really good. Space became something we just visited all the time. The first space station was put up in 1971. Mir was up there in 1986. And now the ISS, which was put up in, 19, in 1998, and it's still going today. Private space companies are even going up there now. And yet space is still really, really dangerous, and it's still really far away. Space is 100 kilometers up, or about 62 miles. That's the Kármán line. And someone had to decide that that became space, because it's not clear. The atmosphere doesn't just stop. It's a very fuzzy boundary. So at 62 miles up, now you're in space. And let me tell you, that is a tough 62 miles. It's basically when a hard vacuum begins to affect matter differently, and that matter is sometimes us. So for more on that, come back tomorrow. Uh, did you know all of this stuff about space? What didn't I mention, because I skipped over a lot, that you think is really cool? Tell me down in the comments. I'll get down there and talk to you about it, too. Tomorrow, come back, and we'll talk about astronauts, how they're picked, and what kind of crazy training they go through, because it is pretty intense. Subscribe for more Test Tube Plus. And if you can't wait until tomorrow for more Test Tube Plus, go over to iTunes, look for Test Tube Plus in the podcast section, and you will find the whole five-episode series squished into one audio podcast. You can listen to it on the bus or on the car or whatever. It's great. And uh, you could also check out last week's episodes, which were on the history of science, which, of course, is how we got to space in the first place. Kind of important, I think. So thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.